Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday morning. Uh, very good to see you again this morning. And we've got a devotion from uh, Matt Wilcox, who will be following up the devotion that uh, we had on Wednesday from Matt. Let me just start with a verse from Revelation. You might remember yesterday I shared a little bit about Revelation and uh, just said that it would come as a uh, news to me, something new to me, that um, one of the main themes of Revelation is worship. And so here's a little verse from Revelation chapter 4. And this is the, the elders before the throne who bowed down before the throne and lay their crowns before the throne and they sing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Not only did God create us, but also he sustains us. Our being, our continued existence is God's will. So let's rest in that assurance as uh, we listen to what Matt has to say to us this morning. Good morning, it's Matt here again and uh, here's your daily uh, thought for the day. So uh, we're uh, back in Matthew 5 and uh, we're going to look today at the third of the Beatitudes, Matthew 5 verse 5. Uh, Blessed are the meek. Uh, now it's remember that this is a continuation so that uh, this is built on the previous beatitude. So the meek are those who recognize uh, their spiritual position uh, as beggars before God, that they're poor in spirit, uh, that that turns them into to, uh, mourning because they recognize their, their fallen state uh, and therefore they have no reason to be proud and so are uh, humble uh, before God. Now, meekness in our generation is not seen as a positive uh, quality is it i mean it's somebody in our uh, culture who's meek is timid or cowardly you know perhaps inoffensive but invisible they they're not somebody with any particular uh, significance and it's we don't encourage our kids to be meek do we um but what was it uh, like in jesus time what was he pointing to Well, the, the word meek uh, that we use comes from an old Anglo-Saxon Anglo word. It means companion or equal. And it's because a meek person is always ready to associate with somebody else. Uh, they never believe themselves to be superior uh, uh, because they know that, that what they've got is a gift from God. Now, that, that's, a, that's a lovely, that's a much nicer way of thinking about it. It's somebody that's very companionable uh, in that sense. Uh, the actual Greek word uh, that uh, is used here is prowess. And now, according to Jordan Peterson, the psychologist, the literal picture in the Greek is that of a warrior who knows how to fight, but chooses to keep his sword in its sheath. Um, uh, I've heard other Christian scholars uh, describe it as being a, a war horse. It's broken, trained and bridled and ready for battle. It's working humbly to restrain its instincts to obey its master's guidance. So in other words, it's, some, it's, it's, a, it's something that has a power uh, and an ability in itself, but chooses or is uh, subservient to its master's control uh, in that sense. And he's going to be put to a task. The, again, that uh, uh, picture that uh, Jordan Peterson uses, you know, it's somebody that, you know, can fight, has a sword, but chooses not to because they're going to, there's, you know, they're, uh, they're doing something better than that. And, it, and so it requires a, a significant amount of stre uh, restraint and strength uh, to do that. And I think that's the same as that war horse. It could flee the battle, uh, but no, it, it's under the control of its rider. And so it will charge with its rider into the teeth of the, uh, of, of the oncoming battle. We remember that our example uh, for meekness is Jesus himself. Matthew uh, eleven twenty nine talks about that. Um, and we know that Jesus was not cowardly, was not timid. He had 
power and authority. And he could have used force, but chose not to. Uh, we remember when he was being tempted, uh, Satan, you know, routinely asked, said, why don't you call on the angels? Do this. Come on, you're the, you're the son of God. You can get yourself out of this mess. Even while he was on the cross, uh, the, the crowds were mocking him, saying, ha, if you're the king of the Jews, just get down off the cross. You know, call down your angels to help you. And um, and yet Jesus didn't. Jesus was a, a man who was humbled under his master's authority, under God's authority to fulfill the purposes and plans of God. And, and he, so he, he submitted himself uh, to his father's rule. Uh, actually, Jesus, when, it, when he's giving this example in Matthew 5, is quoting Psalm 37. And I'll let you have a read of that because it's a, a, it's a long passage. Uh, but yeah, just have a read because it talks about what the humble person looks like. So who are the meek? Well, they're people who are lowly and gentle in mind before God and man. They are sub they show a submission to God's will and a flexibility to his word. Uh, so how on earth do they inherit the earth? How do we what do you think? How do they inherit the earth? Well, the reality is that it's the humble person that will stand with God in the end, because the proud, as we uh, as I talked about in my previous study, they're going to be brought low uh, before God. Nothing, no, no, none of the proud people will stand before God because they can't. They can't stand on their own rights. We have to be humbled and meek before God, willingly serving him. And uh, that should be our, our prayer today that, you know, it's not easy to to uh, kill the flesh, to kill the pride that's within us. But actually, there is nothing better than to serve God with all our uh, mind, body and strength. And so today, be meek, be blessed. The kingdom is yours. Have a good day. I choose to worship, I choose to bow, there's pain in the offering I lay down, here in the conflict, when doubt surrounds, though my soul is unraveling, I choose you, and I through the fire, through the storm and through the flood There is nothing that could ever steal my soul In the valley, you are worthy You are good when life is not You will always and forever be my soul Darkness to
song that Amy has recorded. I um, hope you enjoy it. You can find it on the Worship YouTube channel, which I'm just trying to put on there. There we are. If you go to YouTube, Grosvenor Worship Barnstable, um, you'll find that song and a number of others as well. Um, we're going to spend some time in prayer now, so uh, let's spend a few moments praying. Father God, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you, Father God, that all things were created by your will and all things have their being by your will. We thank you, Lord, that there's nothing that happens that you are unaware of or taken by surprise. And we thank you, God, that you are ruling and reigning over everything. We thank you, Lord, that you are ruling and reigning through this pandemic and that you are ruling and reigning over it. And we thank you, Lord, that you are working out your purposes. And God, I want to pray this morning for those who are struggling and finding this pandemic time difficult, uh, who are finding the uh, lack of human company difficult, who are finding the isolation and loneliness difficult, who uh, are finding job security difficult, who are finding having children at home and homeschooling difficult, uh, and people people who've given birth to, to babies over the last year and have had largely to, to bring their, their babies up so far without much help from anybody else. God, I pray for everybody who is finding this a difficult time, that you would encourage them today and strengthen them, and God, that you would pour your spirit on them. 
And Lord, I want to pray as well for those who have uh, illnesses and uh, for those who have contracted COVID. And God, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them and strengthen them and bless them and lift them up. Lord, I pray for our friends, John and Lorraine Screen in Coombe Martin Baptist Church. And uh, God, I want to pray for John this morning as he has tested positive for COVID. And Lorraine is feeling unwell, but it's not yet been um, reported whether it's COVID or not. Jesus, I ask for your blessing upon them, Lord. I thank you for the blessing they were to us during the time that they were part of Grosvenor Church here in Barnstable. And God, I pray that you would bring healing to them. I pray for John, Lord, that you would heal him from COVID, that he would not have this uh, in any serious way, and that he would make a quick and full recovery. And I pray for Lorraine, Lord, that you would take away this unwellness that she's feeling whether it is COVID or not God we ask you to heal her and uh, God we pray for this precious couple that you would bring healing and recovery to them both and Jesus I want to pray for uh, all those who are involved in treating COVID patients across the country I pray for their safety and I pray God that you would give them strength and energy and I pray, Lord, that they would be uh, really enabled by you to provide excellent care and treatment. And Jesus, I pray for those who are involved in the vaccine rollout. Lord, I uh, thank you that many people have received their vaccine now. I thank you, Lord, that the uh, whole rollout seems to be working really well. And God, we pray for more people to uh, to be able to be vaccinated. We pray, Lord, that the vaccines would be really effective uh, in preventing COVID and in reducing the transmission of it. And we pray, Father God, that there would be no side effects from it at all. And I pray, Lord, for those who are fearful about having the vaccine, some, some of that fear based on um, just incorrect information that has been uh, posted around, and God, I pray that uh, where people are fearful because of incorrect information, that you would bring truth into that situation. That where people are, are scared, that you would give them peace. And uh, I pray, God, that this vaccine would be completely safe and have no harmful side effects. And I pray, Jesus, that uh, the whole pandemic would be brought under control. God, we commit that to you. And Lord, I just ask for those who are involved in the rollout, Lord, particularly people who have volunteered, people we know who have returned from uh, retirement to help with this or just volunteered in helping the, the queues and the administration. God, will you bless them? Thank you for their selfless uh, volunteering. Keep them healthy and well. And I pray, God, that they would find it a really rewarding task. So, Jesus, we do commit these things to you this morning. And uh, God, I pray for each one of us over the weekend, Lord, that this weekend would be joyful and encouraging. And Lord, that uh, that they would each, each of us would know your blessing and your hand upon our lives. For your glory, Lord. Amen. Well, we'll be back on uh, Monday morning at 10.30. And on Monday morning, we have Graham Poland. He'll be doing another talk about worship, following on from what he's going to be speaking in this excellent series he's doing on Sunday. So if you want to join us at 10 o'clock Sunday morning on the Grosvenor Church Facebook page, which uh, you're watching now, or on the Grosvenor Church YouTube channel, uh, you would be very welcome to join us. Uh, I do recommend these uh, this series on worship. Uh, if you haven't caught them all, you can catch up with them in those places. Uh, and it's proving to be a real blessing. And then there's lots of additional material on the worship uh, channel on YouTube that I spoke of earlier, Grosvenor Worship. Okay, well, thank you for joining us today. Have a really good day and a really good weekend. And I look forward to seeing you again on Monday morning. Bye. <laughs>